us have Carl Dunbar here. Um, we'll just open it up for questions on our fifth round selection, Isaiah Laudermilk. Uh, so if you guys can go ahead and hit your raise your hand function and we'll get started. And we'll get underway with Noah Strachey. Noah. Hey, Carl. Um, there's there's a lot of talk right now about whether Isaiah is going to play on the edge or on the defensive line. Where do you guys envision him? Well, um, Isaiah is um, a defensive lineman. And um, when I say defensive line, he's going to play everything from a five technique to a zero nose. All right, let's move on to Joe Rutter. Joe? Or what did you see from him at Wisconsin that made him uh, an intriguing prospect for you guys? I think he fits the mold for what we want to do here in Pittsburgh. You know, he's a big strapping young man, and I know he he lost some weight to do his pro days, but around about 285, 290, he can play a four-eye. He can move down over the guards when we go in our sub package, and he can push the middle of the pocket. I mean, and to get a kid with this kind of size and um, this kind of height in the fifth round, I think it's a really good get for the Steelers. Brian Vacco. Yeah, Carl, I think this is the uh, what, the third straight draft. You guys have taken a, a defensive lineman. Um, you know, Chris and, and Tyson are back as well. And I didn't even mention Cam and Stephon. Just how uh, how wide open, I guess, is the competition in your room right now to uh, not just make the roster, but get some time? Well, I think, you know, I mean, I come from the South and, you know, they say defensive linemen are just like pretty women. There's not a lot of them, but everybody wants them. And uh, when you find a big guy like that and you want to get him on your team, I think that's the thing you do. And uh, Mike T and Kevin Cobra did a good job of getting us some talent. Let's move on to Mark Caboli. Mark? I don't know how I'm going to follow that up, but um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Carl, for you guys to move back into the fifth round to get – Isaiah, you must really like him. Was there any, you know, table banging on your part to get back in? Or uh, what was the scene like uh, when you knew he was still around? No, with the COVID protocol, I was sitting in my office and um, didn't have my mic on. So I, I think uh, Coach Tomlin and Coach Corbett, they did a good job of really scouting. And the scouts did a great job of evaluating the talent. And we didn't have a pick in the, in the fifth round. And we kind of figured he wouldn't be there in the sixth. So they made the move, and um, I'm glad they did. Christopher Carter. Hey, Carl. Uh, one thing, one thing Isaiah talked about was his was his versatility and how he played at all these different spots in the defensive line. On you talked about his size and 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 what you liked about that. How much did you see of his tape that you said, "Man, I can use this guy in all these different ways"? That got you excited to to get a guy like this. And I think that's what it was all about. You know, his versatility really helped him. You know. Um, get picked for this team and the only bad thing about him he's gonna come here and he won't be able to work in the number 97. We'll go to Brooke Pryor, ESPN. Yeah, hey Carl, how much had you guys communicated with Isaiah throughout the draft process? I mean, was there a high level of interest that you guys were letting him know, hey, we want you whether we have to trade up to get you or not? No, I don't think those conversations go on with any kid because these kids don't know where they're going to get drafted and we really don't know how they're going to get slotted on, on draft weekend. But um, I, I maybe spoke to about 40 or 50 defensive linemen, you know, because we didn't have the combine and we had certain pro days that we could go to and only um, three members from each team could go. So I did a lot of Zooming and a lot of talking to kids on the phone just to get um, acclimated and to find out, you know, a little bit about the kids and he was one of the young men I spoke to, so it worked out great. Hey, Carl. Um, your three starting defensive linemen, as good as they are, are 32, 28, and 34 years old. Is there a, a plan or a desire to, to lessen their snaps and, 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 and part of from some of the younger guys hoping they step up and, and play them more if they show they can, or, or do you, the philosophy of riding them as much as they can play? Well, I, I think it's a little bit of both. You know, if you got young guys who can step up and play, you put them on the field, you know, or if not, those older guys have to play. And I think, you know, Tyson, Cam, to it, they do a really good job of um, of taking care of their bodies and playing well. And, you know, Isaiah Bugs, Carlos Davis, 
uh, Henry Mondu, all those young guys, you know, they're, they're backing up for a reason and they're trying to give us quality reps. So I, I think the more competition we can get in that room, the better it'd be for everybody because you like your guys fresh, especially playing 17 games this year. All right. We appreciate it, everybody. We'll talk to you momentarily.